students don't often think of the skin as an organ system. However, the skin, also known as the integument, and its associate structures, including hair, nails, and sweat glands, collectively known as the integumentary system, is indeed a full-fledged organ system that incorporates a variety of functions that include physical, chemical, and biological protection, temperature regulation, sensory reception, vitamin synthesis participation, and blood storage. The integument covers the entire body and has a total surface area of up to 2.2 square meters, the approximate dimensions of a twin-size mattress. The skin accounts for about 7% of body weight, and all of its complexities exist in the thickness between 1.5 and 4.0 millimeters, the equivalent of about 10 to 40 sheets of standard paper. The skin is composed of two distinct regions, the outermost epithelial tissue region, known as the epidermis, and its durable, deep connective tissue layer, known as the dermis. The epidermis is primarily made up of keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. Keratin is a durable, fibrous protein. The epidermis presents with four distinct cell types that exist in four or five different layers. The four major cell types within the epidermis include keratinocytes, the most abundant cell, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, and Merkel cells. These cells are critical to the function of skin. The layer of the epidermis just superficial to the connective tissue is called the stratum basale. It is primarily made up of cells known as keratinocytes. Because these cells rapidly divide, the other name of this layer is the stratum germinativum, or germinating layer. As these cells divide, cells are pushed into the upper layers with the youngest cells remaining in the stratum basale. The rate of mitosis is so robust that the entire epidermis is replaced every 25 to 45 days. The cells in the stratum basale are closely held together by desmosomes. The main function of the keratinocytes is to produce keratin. Keratin is a durable protein fiber. As these cells develop and are pushed to the upper layers of the epidermis, Keratin dominates the cell to the point there are no organelles present. Essentially, the cells transform to a membrane-bound package of keratin. Melanocytes make up about 10 to 25 percent of the cells in the stratum basale. These cells are anatomically characterized by branching cytoplasmic extensions that extend well into the adjacent layer of epidermis. These cells produce the protein pigment melanin. Melanin has a color ranging from yellow to brownish black. As melanin accumulates, it is packaged in membrane-enclosed vesicles known as melanosomes. Cellular proteins help move the melanosomes through the cytoplasm to the cytoplasmic extensions of the cell where they leave the cell and are taken up by the keratinocytes. The melanosomes form a shield over the keratinocyte nucleus to protect it from ultraviolet rays. Exposure to ultraviolet rays increases the production and uptake of melanin and helps explain why skin tans and people from tropical regions have darker skin. Though technically not part of the stratum basale, widely dispersed Merkel cells exist at the epidermis-dermis junction. Each of these cells have a nerve ending associated with it. One nerve ending and one cell is known as a Merkel disc. Merkel discs serve as touch receptors. 
The layer adjacent to the basali is called the stratum spinosum. The spinosum is characterized by several layers of keratinocytes that contain extensive networks of intermediate filaments that span the cytosol from desmosome to desmosome. Interspersed between the keratinocytes are dendritic cells known as Langerhans cells. These star-shaped cells arise from the bone marrow and are macrophages. Macrophages are cells that engulf and destroy target cells, debris, and foreign substances. The stratum granulosum is the next layer. The granulosum is four to six layers thick. The process of cellular keratinization begins in this layer. The cells flatten and organelles begin to disappear. Two granules are present in these cells. One granule, known as keratohyalin, helps form keratin in the adjacent layers. The other is called lamellar granule. These granules contain a hydrophobic glycolipid. The glycolipid is ultimately released into the interstitial space, line the outer membrane, and play a major role in inhibiting water loss through the epidermis. The stratum corneum is made up of 20 to 30 flattened anucleated cells that are filled with keratin. Glycolipids are dispersed between the cells, effectively waterproofing the skin. The corneum provides a formidable barrier protection and it represents up to 75% of the epidermis. underlying connective tissue layer of the skin is called the dermis. It is a strong and flexible connective tissue that includes fibroblasts, macrophages, and a relatively fewer mast cells and white blood cells. The matrix is embedded with elastin and collagen fibers. The dermis is analogous to the animal hide that is used to make leather goods. The dermis is richly invested with nerve cells and blood vessels, though hair and integumentary glands are derived from epidermal tissue, they reside in the dermis. The dermis has two layers, the papillary and reticular layers. The papillary layer is made up of areolar connective tissue characterized by loosely woven collagen and elastic fibers. Immune-related phagocytes and macrophages easily move through the papillary region. The papillary region invaginates and takes on a peg-like projection appearance at its surface. These pegs are referred to as dermal papillae. The papillae contain capillary loops and nerve cells that transmit pain and touch sensations. Among other things, the dermal papillae provide better proximity of nourishing blood vessels to the epidermis. Thick skin is found on the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. In these regions, the papillae lay on top of mounds of dermis known as dermal ridges. Because of these dermal ridges, the epidermis is pushed up, forming epidermal ridges. The combination of dermal and epidermal ridges yield what are known as friction ridges, the visible lines and whorls in the feet and hands. In fingers, these friction ridges are responsible for fingerprints. The reticular layer makes up 80% of the dermis. It is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue. The appendages or additions to the skin include hair, nails, and glands. In humans, hair plays the role of sensory reception, specifically in the sensing of insects on the skin. The hair on our scalp guards against physical trauma, 
heat loss, and sunlight. Eyelashes help protect the eyes and shield them from excessive light. The eyebrows help redirect sweat from the eyes, and nose hairs filter large inhaled particles. Hair is a flexible strand made up primarily of epidermal-derived keratinized cells. The keratin of hair is considered hard keratin versus the soft keratin in the epidermis. This hard keratin is more durable and does not flake off. The regions of a hair include the root and the shaft. A transverse section of hair reveals a specific organization of keratinized cells that include a central medulla region surrounded by a multilayer cortex and an outer layer of overlapping cells known as the hair cuticle. In our laboratory session, we will spend more extensive time examining the anatomy of a strand of hair. Another appendage of the skin includes the glands. Apocrine and eccrine glands produce sweat. These glands are also known as sudoriferous glands. Sudoriferous glands are found throughout the skin with the exception of parts of the genitalia and the nipples. There are up to 3 million sudoriferous glands in humans. Glands typically have two potential modes of secretion. Merocrine secretion is accomplished through exocytosis and holocrine secretion through cellular rupture. Both apocrine and eccrine glands are merocrine glands. The overwhelming majority of sweat glands are apocrine glands and are found in high concentration on the forehead, palms of the hands, and soles of the feet. The secretory portion of the gland is coiled in the dermis and its duct opens on the surface of the skin known as a pore. Sweat is actually a hypotonic filtrate of blood that is made up of 99% water. It also includes salt, antibodies, a peptide called dermicidin that has the ability to kill microbes, and a small amount of nitrogenous wastes. There are only about 2,000 apocrine glands. These glands are limited to axillary or the underarm and the anal genital regions. Their ducts empty into hair follicles. In addition to the typical components of sweat, these glands also secrete fatty substances and proteins. Because of these additions, the secretion tends to be thicker and often milky or yellowish in color. Though odorless, when secreted onto the skin, Exterior bacteria degrade the organic components, leading to the characteristic body odor. Apocrine glands become activated around the onset of puberty. A sebaceous gland secretes an oily substance called sebum into the hair follicle. Sebum helps soften and lubricate the skin and hair. It also has critical bacterial side properties that help control bacteria buildup on the external surface of the skin. Sebaceous glands are the only known holocrine glands. These glands are also activated around puberty.